Hello, how are you? We are going to be going through all of my artwork that I have on hand here today. My apologies if I'm a bit sweaty. I was just carrying all these boxes up from the basement to the second floor. I have a, a craft show uh, coming up in about a month and it's a big one. Um, so this video is for if you've been with me for a while and just want to like see some of the paintings I've done or if you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about how I got to from picking up a paintbrush for the first time to having a booth at a craft show and just having that confidence in selling your artwork. All right, so we're going to do things a little out of order here. I'm going to start with the oil paintings just because they're a bit bigger that I can get those out of the way and then we'll jump into the watercolors. Um, but my journey did start with the watercolors. So I want to show you this first. This is an acrylic painting. How many of you have done like the, uh, the sip and paint classes? I love them. Uh, so this was a painting I did at one of the sip and paint classes uh, a couple of years ago, probably 2015, 2016 loved it like I love to paint but I always needed like an instructor to walk me through I can't just look at a blank canvas and be like doo, 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 doo. um so yeah that was one of my sip and paint paintings and then I come across Sarah Cray at let's make art let's make art.com and she does watercolor tutorials so when we jump into the watercolors you'll see um that's what made me be drawn to her is here was like these tutorials that I could do from home Oh, and I love those. I dove into those head first. So then once I was doing that for a while, um, the, the sip and paint classes, they always use acrylic. Uh, but oil paintings, oils, they just look, people use the word, they look more expensive. And they do, they look just gorgeous. Um, but I was so intimidated by oil paintings. With oil, you, you don't wash the brushes um, with, with water. You use paint thinner. Um, you have to use different brushes and I just, it was kind of over my head. Um, and then I came across a man called Justin Wozniak. Look him up. He's in New Jersey and he was like, kind of like your modern day Bob Ross. Uh, and he did these tutorials and was just so easy to follow. But again, I didn't know anything about the, about the materials. Well here, he was offering a class in his studio in New Jersey led by none other than Bob Ross's son, Steve Ross and Dana Jester. So, and that day, this was my very first oil painting. <laughs> so this one will never be for sale. This one was my first one that I painted with the help of Dana Jester um, and Steve Ross. Dana Jester actually signed the back of it, Happy Paintings. Um, Dana was also a friend of, you know, Steve Ross and Bob Ross. I should have got Steve to sign it, but I'm just one of those people, like, I didn't want to bother him. Like, even though he was, he was so nice, so very nice. Um, I do have, though, my certificate of completion <laughs> that Steve Ross and Dana Jester, uh, both signed on the bottom there. So that was in December of 2019. That was my very first oil painting. One, this one came off from my wall downstairs as well. This one will also never be for sale uh, because this has a lot of nice memories to it for me. I went, my mom really wanted to learn how to paint. So I found another painting class, uh, you know, led by somebody else over by where my mom lived. Again, another like five hour one way trip over to there. Um, but my mom and I took a class and we each painted, you know, one of our own. So this I painted, you know, side by side with my mom. So this one holds special memories to me. So that one will also never be for sale. Um, this one I just have here next to me. I did a little bit ago. I'm not happy with it. I want to add some more like highlights and stuff. It's just kind of like blah, but there's that one. Let me knock these two big ones out of the way. If you've been with me for a while, you've probably seen this one up on my wall. <laughs> so this one is a big one. And this is actually one that I did not use a tutorial for, but I did use some of the things that I learned, such as like making a sky and, you know, with the tree and the grass and then the castle, which is kind of like looking from a photo and painted that like that one. Now let me talk a little bit about craft shows and if you're selling your artwork. I do not do a lot of craft shows. I do have a website where I'll sell online. 
I've learned that when it comes to like big pieces of artwork, there's just certain types of like craft shows that just aren't gonna sell for you. You know, I've been in the, you know, high school gymnasium with, um, you know, you get a lot of multi-level marketing and not that there's anything wrong with that, but you'll be set up next to like 31 tables or like the lip sense. And people just aren't coming to those to buy, you know, original artwork. Uh, so dragging everything there and setting everything up paying to be there and not selling anything it's just it can be very discouraging so this one that i'm signed up for now it's actually i think at the at the moment the only one that i'm willing to do um and it's here in my town and it draws in like thousands and thousands of people and it's a three-day show thursday friday saturday nope friday saturday sunday and the cost of it for a 10 by 10 space is 250 dollars now, if you're selling handmade mittens or something like that, a 10 by 10 space is fine. These take up a lot of room, so I had to get two spaces. So already we're $500 into it. And then it can be a long process to build up your display. Um, I highly recommend, and I know they're expensive, uh, but if you're going to be in this for the long run, Pro Panels. Look up ProPanels.com. They are based out of Texas. If you look on uh, Facebook Marketplace, I've been looking every morning <laughs> for like something local and, and used. Um, I do have a set of pro panels that'll fill up a 10 by 10 space, but here I am a month out from my craft show and I don't have any sort of like display, uh, like walls for that second space. So I'm looking for pro panels running out of time. I might have to settle on some grid wall, um, grid wall panels, which will work. Um, and then you need heavy duty canopies. I don't recommend like those hundred dollar canopies. I mean, if you're just starting out, yes, you gotta be like cost, uh, watch your costs. Here is, oh, this one. I have done a smaller version of this one before, but this one is, whoa, this one is quite large. So this one was done, uh, by that Justin Wozniak guy that I was talking about that had the studio in New Jersey. Um, and he does tutorials. Um, like I said, he's the, he was the one that I started following first. And this was one of his. Oh, so pretty. Um, now, when it comes to following tutorials and selling your artwork, not all artists are okay with that. Um, so you have to check with them and say, hey, if I follow one of your tutorials and I paint it, is it okay if I turn around and sell my work? And Justin is absolutely fine with that. Uh, so I do appreciate that. So this I am able to sell. We'll talk about some other artists um, that also have given permission in case you are an artist and looking for like some tutorials to learn and then want to be able to sell it. All right. So I have several boxes here. Um, and these boxes is also how I transport them to the craft show uh, safely try to anyway. All right, so here is one similar to some of the other ones. This is uh, 18 by 24. This is a pretty typical size that I would do, an 18 by 24 uh, canvas. I like to paint the sides because that way, if someone purchases it, they are fine to just put it on the wall just like that, and it doesn't require framing. Framing can get so expensive. And I just, I don't have the money for that upfront cost to frame these um, and then maybe sit on them for a year before it sells. <laughs> so um, that's what I do. I like to paint the sides. Next one here. This one was a Justin Wozniak. Um, I think Paintings by Justin might be his his name on, on YouTube and he has a Facebook group. I like that one a lot. I have the date on that one, January of 2020. So that one was done about a month after I did my very first oil painting. And again, these are all oil. Oh, love that one. And then this one here, this one was a Bob Ross tutorial. Um, and he only uses three colors in this. I know there's like a, a, a dark blue, maybe a little bit of black, black, white, and a dark blue. Um, May of 2020, and I even wrote on there, inspired by Bob Ross, The Joy of Painting, Season 2, Episode 4, Shades of Grey. Uh, so, did that one following 
of that episode of Bob Ross. Um, and then I have here, um, so just as I was really starting to get into painting, I was really going through my, my recovery journey. And, you know, I, I shared that very publicly. And a local um, news place that reached out wanted to do a story on me. And she did such a nice job writing it up. And I asked her, I'm like, can I take that story and turn it into like a, a board that I could put um, at my booth? And it says, local artist uses art as recovery from years of abuse addiction. Um, so I had this made up at a Vista print and I display this at my booth. Um, and I mean, this is the whole reason I love to set up my booth and have people come by. I had a woman once stop by and I saw her and she was reading this and she turned around to me. She had tears in her eyes and she's like, can I give you a hug? Um, and I think we, we both just cried, <laughs> you know, didn't, didn't talk about anything else. We just, um, yeah, it's really neat to make those connections. So I do put this up at my booth just to kind of share my story. Here is one. This was by a, a Kevin Hill tutorial. I like that. I, my favorite part is just like the snow on the road there on the bottom. Like, oh, that came out so, so cool. Um, so Kevin Hill, I think his website is paintwithkevin.com. His tutorials are not free. You do, you do pay for them. You can either get a DVD or instant download. I do the instant downloads. And it's like, I think the range is like $15 maybe $20 per lesson. So I would might would have paid $15 for access to the tutorial, but then he does give permission for you to sell your work then. So here is that one that I did by Kevin Hill. This one is my favorite. <laughs> so this one, um, his YouTube name now is Easy Oil Painting, but his name is Stephen Conway and he's in Ireland. Um, and he just has a bunch of cool oil painting tutorials. <laughs> and this was one of them. Uh, this is not like his typical, I mean, typically he does, you know, like landscape pretty scenes. Um, but I tried this one and I'm just so in love with this one and how it turned out. I just, I couldn't believe it. Love this one. Um, so check him out and he as well is given permission to sell your work if you, you know, followed him for a tutorial. Okay, this is uh, kind of like a mini version of that other one that I showed. The trees are a bit of a different color, but has that pathway. Again, Justin Wozniak uh, tutorial. So we have another Bob Ross type one here. Different sizes here. Uh, this one, I love this. This was also, this was uh, Stephen Conway, the easy oil painting guy on YouTube. Just love the colors and the reflection in that one. I've done that one a few times. Uh, this one. This is uh, Tim Gagnon. G-A-G-N-O-N. And he has a website. I think timgagnon.com. Uh, kind of like the same setup as Kevin Hill. You pay for access to his tutorials. He has given permission to sell. Uh, but he does request that you put like on the back of the painting, um, inspired by artist Tim Cagnon, or if I set it up in my booth at the, the craft, craft show, um, you know, the card that I would put next to it, put inspired by artist Tim Cagnon. Um, so there is that one. Uh, Tim Cagnon, he's probably the one that like challenges me the most. Ooh, like I always gotta take, take a deep breath before I start his tutorials. Um but love learning from him. He's really good with like clouds and stuff like that. This one was also a Tim Gagnon uh, tutorial. That one came out really cool. I like that a lot. Now, some people, I mean, I have a hard time when people are like, oh, you're so talented. I wanna be like, I just followed a tutorial, <laughs> like I just did what they did. Um, but really, I mean, there is a lot of skill involved. So don't feel like defeated if you're following tutorials. And there are like artists out there that like look down upon us and oh, such a pain to try to like justify yourself. But the way I see it, I don't have the skill to like write songs 
but I can sing a song. Like it's still like my voice, my, you know, if I do a painting, it's still my hands and it does take skill. Um, so don't be discouraged. <laughs> well, yeah, see this one I didn't use a tutorial for. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, just kind of looking off of a picture and painting that one. I love the green, just like how that sky came out in the background there. So cool. Oh, this one is done on uh, into the canvas on a wood panel. Oh, I forget the artist's name. I'll have to, I'll have to look her up. Um, but I, I paid to take her, like she had a course, and she is phenomenal when it comes to painting water that just looks so realistic. And I was just so in love with it, and I paid to take her course, probably paid like $300. Um, absolutely worth it, but I was just, I don't know that I'll ever be able to recreate like what she is able to do. Like I tried so hard to follow, um, and you know, I like this, but it's, it's, it's not her, <laughs> it's not in close to like her work. Um, but yeah, so there is that one. Okay, so this is actually one of my watercolors. <laughs> and I had it framed um, because I entered some of my work at the county fair and they required that your work be framed. <laughs> so <laughs> I have this one here in this uh, frame. So this was a Sarah Cray Let's Make Art watercolor tutorial. And then I went down to the local frame shop to have get a matte board that really matched that color really pretty and then put it in this frame. If you sell your artwork, we can talk about pricing for a second. Oh, pricing can be all over the place and it can be so difficult to know how to price your artwork. Um, you don't want to make it too cheap, but you don't want to make it too expensive, but there's, you got to find that fine balance. Um, if you, if you sell your work for too cheap, you're, you're kind of like cheapening yourself in terms of people's perspective. You know, if they come by your booth um, and you're selling your work for, I mean, this is farly exaggerated, like 10 cents. They're like, why, why would I want a piece of artwork that's worth 10 cents? They come by your booth and that same piece of artwork is like $2,000. It's, and again, very exaggerated for, for my artwork. It's like, oh, wow. Like, it, there's almost like this perceived value to it. So you have to find like the happy medium, happy balance. Um, some people say to do it by like square inch. Um, so that's what I've kind of done for like my baseline just to so I have somewhere to start with some people will say like so a dollar per square inch um for me uh you know that's a little too expensive for what I want to sell my work at so I do it both by size and by square inch so an 11 by 14 I believe this is an 11 by 14 um 75 cents a square inch would put this at 115 dollars so that is what I price this at. I mean, it is not a print. It is an original painting. You can tell from the back, it is very much so an original painting. <laughs> and then uh, 16 by 20, 16 by 20, uh, this zebra here is 16 by 20. Then I go down to 50 cents per square inch. So the, like, the larger the painting is, the less per square inch I kind of go. So this one would be $160. And for an original piece of artwork, like that's not bad at all. Now, people might ask, well, why don't you just like make prints of them? By the time I would pay to have prints made up of this on canvas, I probably have like $50 into it. And I don't have that much money um, to spend to sit on like inventory like that. Whereas, you know, this piece of canvas might have cost $10. So my cost into this is, you know, $10. Um, plus, you know, I have all my art supplies already here. So here's kind of a tour of <laughs> my space for painting. I actually just bought this shelf on Amazon. And I liked it because it had like this L shape on uh, this open space for my easel there. All right, so we'll start over here. Um, so for oil painting, <laughs> again, you don't rinse your brushes with water. It's uh, paint thinner. 
This thing is just scraped the brushes off on there. Oh, we have, I have some more paintings down here. here some miscellaneous scissors, uh, my artist tape. If I need to tape uh, my watercolor paper down and you can pull it up carefully without uh, ripping it. So here are my oil paints. Here are my acrylic paints. I got these uh, bins from 31. Oh, here is like miscellaneous stuff that you would use with oil paintings. Still learning how to use some of it. Uh, Gamvar gloss, I use that to um, varnish them when I'm done. See all kinds of fun stuff in there. Uh, here I have some more blank canvases, uh, lots of watercolor paper, watercolor pencils. <laughs> Uh, just some more art supplies. Here is my brushes. These are all my oil brushes. Again, you can't use them for oil and acrylic. It's one or the other. So my acrylic brushes I actually keep separate in here. <laughs> and then uh, here are some more oil paints. This this little thing, somebody actually made this. So when you're painting, you get out the colors you need and have them all right there on your desk or easel or workspace. The 18 by 24, which is most of what these have been, $200. Then that's uh, 40, 46 cents a square inch. And then the 22 by 28, 40 cents a square inch, just $250. So that's kind of where I put my pricing at for those. I mean, it's not an exact science. Um, a couple years ago, there was a storefront uh, and through the holiday season, you could pay to have your, your, your things in there. And, uh, you know, they had people that would sell it and employees that would work there. Um, so you had to pay an upfront cost. And again, I needed like more than one space because my work was larger than the person crocheting, they crocheted mittens, you know, next to me or whatnot. <laughs> uh, so I had that upfront cost. And then on top of that, um, they would take 25% off of the sale. So I had to raise my prices. Um, and uh, I'm not even sure that I broke even. So again, I found myself like, very selective as to where I sell my work or where I want to put my effort into dragging everything up and making that display and selling um which is why i really like selling online okay, this one here was a stephen conway tutorial now this one um a little bit thicker on the side i mean you can get different thicknesses in your canvas so a little bit thicker on this one really nice and painting the sides to kind of go along with it there so they don't have to frame it. I like that one. This one was a Tim Gagnon tutorial. Again, trying to learn, like I said, like he has a lot of lessons on clouds. Um, so wanted to, oh, the color, I love that. So again, painted the sides. So there is that one. I love this next one. Oh. This was another um, Stephen Conway tutorial. Oh, came out so good. I just, I love those colors and the reflection in the water. Yes. <laughs> Okay, this one here. So this is one, once you start selling your artwork, you are gonna get a ton of people asking, like, uh, pets are a big one. Like, oh, do you paint, do you, can you paint my dog? Do you paint pets? Uh, can you paint my house? <sighs> Commission work stresses me out and I don't like it. Um, <laughs> and, I, I don't like to charge people or I won't charge people up front 
um, for a painting that I've never, never done before. There are some of these that I've painted several times, like that design or that, that pattern or whatnot, um, where I will do a, a made to order uh, painting. Well here, um, somebody wanted like a field of, of tulips. And this was like early on and I'm like, I don't, I don't know that I can do that, but me being a people pleaser, I'm like, okay, listen, I'll, I'll give it a shot. If you like it, you can purchase it. If you don't, then don't. And it stressed me out because I was trying to make this painting like to, to what the person wanted. Um, that was, that was what I came up with and, uh, wasn't quite what she was looking for. So she passed on it. So now I have this painting. <laughs> Now that's not to say, I mean, I have done a few, very few commission pieces for very close friends that like begged, <sighs> but it stressed me out. Um, I would much rather just have not, have not have any pressure as I'm painting a picture and just make it however I want and then be like, ta-da! If you want it, you can buy it. If not, okay. Like, uh, okay. Oh, this one was a Justin Wozniak tutorial. Oh, I love how the sky just like breaks open in that one. And I love that little bit of light in the water there. This one here, this was a Kevin Hill tutorial. Now I can see, like, oh, the longer you have to store these and hold on to them, like, they so easily get, like, scuffed up and whatnot. And there's, like, a red... I don't know if you can see where to go. Right here. There, you can see it. There's, like, a red, like, scuff mark on this one. So I can either, like, highly discount this one... Or I might even just go back in and uh, paint some new clouds over that spot and <laughs> see if we can touch it up. Uh, but it does happen. Um, I do try to keep them nice and unscuffed. And, but accidents do happen, so we gotta be careful. All right, I'm gonna take a second and put all these back in the box. Um, but now I kind of know what I have like inventory wise and we'll jump into um, watercolors and some spray paint art. That one that was still on my easel. Um, so I've been wanting to learn acrylic painting, but ones that look a little more elevated than your paint by sip uh, paintings. I mean, a lot of those designs, you look at them and you can just kind of tell what which paintings are paint by sip <laughs> or <laughs> sip and paint, sip and paint paintings. <laughs> Um, so this was a tutorial on that Tim Gagnon website. He has several several other artists on there that will teach tutorials, and this one was done in acrylic, um, and I'm really happy with that. So again, going back to learning how to make the acrylic paintings look a little bit more elevated. Our acrylic paintings dry so fast. You blink and it's dried. Uh, so blending, it, it can be tricky. Oil painting, that takes at least like a week to dry so you can blend for days uh, but the trouble I run into then is if I keep blending or keep adding more paint it just becomes like a muddy mess uh, so there's there's a learning curve for both so there's this one the boxes um, not this box uh, but the boxes below here that I've been pulling the paintings out of I order my boxes from Uline and like I said, the, the most popular painting that I like to do size-wise is 18 by 24 canvas because I can get boxes from Uline that are 20 by 26, so two inches more on each side uh, by four inches deep. And that gives enough room to wrap it, to bubble wrap it, and get it to someone safely when they order online. I like the 18 by 24 canvases. I have boxes figured out for those. These here... So I watched some YouTube tutorials on spray paint, like art. Um, and I, I made this sign again through Vistaprint to put in my booth, um, just so people could kind of see the process. Like there I have my mask on, um, working with the spray paint. 
<laughs> so anyway, just following some YouTube tutorials, made some pretty cool like spray paint art. Um, so these are made on just your run of the mill uh, poster board. You do it on the, the glossy side. And then I would put it in this mat board, the 16 by 20 mat board, and I sell these for $45. So I'll just go through these quickly here, try not to show the glare too much. Is that one? I mean, it's, with spray paint, it's just, it's so fun. Um, oh, here, like this one, for instance. Oh, first of all, I love doing the planets in spray paint. And then you would take like a palette knife, so there's wet spray paint on there, and you can, um, so those white areas are actually where you're scraping that spray paint off and you're seeing that white poster board underneath. <gasps> so cool! <laughs> Lots of like, spacey ones. I have not made these in quite some time. Maybe I'll even mark them down uh, at this particular craft show. Um, love the colors in that one. Oh my goodness. I don't know. My husband thinks they should be more expensive just because he thinks they're so unique. Beachy one. I was just watch was I watching uh, Armageddon. I was watching Armageddon the other day. This reminds me of like just the the rock that they landed on. <laughs> I got I got a Star Wars stencil and tried to do <laughs> this one. I mean, this one is definitely kind of artsy. I got um, like the shape of the beast from like Beauty and the Beast with the rose. Tried to do like an artsy thing there with that of the Earth and the Moon. I love this one. I mean, maybe I do want to get back into making these. I mean, we'll, we'll see how, we'll see if they sell at this particular craft show. I mean, if they do, because they don't take that, that long to make. Um, but you definitely need to have a space. I was either working on in the backyard or a space in the basement and, you know, have to have the mask on because you're just, you'd be inhaling all this spray paint otherwise. So it makes quite the mess. <laughs> There's one. Looks like I was playing with some like silver spray paint there. What's that one. So again, lots of space space ones. Um, Cause I mean with spray paint art, that's kind of what you were starting with. And what you would do is you would take your blank, blank piece of uh, poster board. You would spray, you know, your, your colors, your blues, you could do like your shadow on the bottom. So it's going to be like just, just a mess of colors. And then you take like the, the five pound coffee can, I think it is, and set that over top, um, real tight. And then you spray your sky around it. So when you take that coffee can off, that's when you have like that really cool, yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's all kinds of YouTube videos and tutorials out there. Um, and then there's more advanced ones that I, you know, started playing around with. Um, so here was one. And again, use that same technique um, with using that palette knife. I mean, for these buildings, you're just like scraping that paint back off to give that kind of like illusion of that. And then drawing the bridge in. <laughs> So yeah, all, all done with spray paint. Same thing with the lines down here. It's just that pala knife, like uh, scraping the paint back off to show the white poster board underneath. Oh, and then this I had made just to, I think this was before I had made the one with the pictures that would actually like show. I wanted something with pictures because it's kind of hard to like visualize like what you made that with spray paint. <laughs> Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through these next ones kind of quickly. All of these, I got this bin at Home Depot. Um, and this is a perfect for storing uh, these here. So these are all going to be either photograph prints or watercolors. They're 8x10s. 
and then I get my matte boards, goldenstateart.com. That is the cheapest I found them and they're really great quality. So photograph, I probably had them all together. So these are all photo prints. Guatemala. Oh, no, here's a watercolor already. Um, so from Golden State Art, oops. So here's a watercolor I did. Golden State Art also has these double matte prints. So you can see, oh, it's got like that inner layer there. It just kind of gives it more of an elevated look and they have different color options versus just your single layer matte board. So uh, these watercolors, again, any watercolors you see, most of them are probably from Sarah Cray at Let's Make Art. And again, she is the one that got me into watercoloring. She has tutorials online that are free, but she also has a subscription box where you can get kits every month which I highly recommend. Um, so in her kits, she provides, um, you know, tutorial card. It has the outline for you to trace and then a card of what it's gonna look like at the end. So there's that. I might do my painting of koi fish. <laughs> Uh, so I highly, highly recommend her tutorials. She does give permission to sell your work. Uh, this one here was a commission piece. Somebody wanted the fruits of the spirit and like they saw a picture like this somewhere. So I painted that. And then I had done a second one because it came out cute. Sarah Craig tutorial. The fish. Spooky cat, non-spooky cat. Oh, see, as soon as I painted this one, again, this is a Sarah Cray tutorial. Everybody's like, oh, can you paint my dog? Can you paint my dog? And they all have all these different kinds of dogs. I'm like, I can paint a golden retriever because that is what the tutorial was. Oh, I gotta separate. Now we're back to photo prints. A dove, uh, I named that one Shelter. He's got his wing up protecting himself from the rain. Love photography. That. This is a local mansion here in our area. These little lens ball things. There's another one. It's around here somewhere. I just saw it. It is a glass ball and it flips everything upside down. So I love playing with it in the water. You can see here the water's on top and the sunset there on the bottom. <laughs> this picture here legitimately took in a mud puddle. I mean, so I was in this parking lot and there was this puddle and the sunset, you know, over here. And I'm just like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Put that picture in a puddle. Now this one, <laughs> I call this one Swamp Reflection. This photo is intentionally upside down. So see, I have my name there on the bottom. Um, I just love how that looks. So the trees are actually a reflection. That is, um, you know, what it looked like when I took the picture from where I was standing. But I just thought it was kind of artsy and cool. Um, because you have the trees in the bottom, the ground, and you have the sky. So it almost look, would look normal, except for all like the lily pads there. <laughs> Flower in my front yard. Columbus Marathon. Oh, I have a couple pictures from here. So the Kinzu Bridge in Mount Jewett. This isn't, this is more of an artsy one. Um, <laughs> but so there was this uh, rail railroad bridge that went across and a couple years back a tornado came through and just ripped out the middle section um and now it is like this highly tourist attraction area 
they were gonna do a cleanup of all like the pieces down there and it's hard to tell in the snow um, but they didn't they left it there so you can actually walk down into there you can walk out to the edge of the skywalk which is where I took this photo from um, so people in this area would know what that is Guatemala I got way too close to him to take that picture <laughs> I mean, he was just up on the hillside in the wild. Like, I mm, I don't know what I was doing. <sighs> kind of an artsy one there. Okay, so here's the Kinzu Bridge again. Here, I'm at the end of the skywalk now, actually looking back. Like, there's a tourist center here. Um, so this is what it looked like, you know, obviously when it was intact, it would go like that all the way across. So behind me is where it had all been, like, uh, torn out by the tornado. Uh, Watkins Glen that's a pretty famous spot to take pictures at there oh the river behind my house more of the river behind my house again local people will appreciate that because it's here um, <laughs> these snowmobile fans yeah it's always so beautiful out there on the sleds Uh, there is a little, uh, there's an amusement park in Erie, Pennsylvania that is right on Lake Erie. So from the Ferris wheel, taking that shot of the sunset over Lake Erie. Oh, love that. Always the best view on the Ferris wheel. Uh, I think that's somewhere over Florida. Ocean City, Maryland. Uh, this is taken at a local camp, Whitehall Camp. Playing with that lens ball again. Uh, and a piece of corn. And it had this little guy on it. I'm like, oh, we're going outside for a photo shoot. <laughs> uh, okay, watercolor. Galaxy Wolf there. See, I wanted to go through these to see what I had and what I didn't. Because I want to paint some more before... Um, this craft show. This is a really popular one, like Galaxy Trees one. I've done a couple of those. Um, this one, I've only done one of these, and here it is, and it's of Pittsburgh. I've gotten this really cool, like, gold paint that I wanted to play with. Uh, so yeah, that's really neat. Whale. Uh, cool reflections in the water there. Sunset snowmobiling. <laughs> uh, Guatemala. I got on a missions trip there and it's just gorgeous. <sighs> Walking down this dirt road in Guatemala. Look at how cute their little cows are. <laughs> Those ears. <laughs> oh, okay. So this bridge is located. I'm from Tamaco, Pennsylvania, which you probably never heard of. And a little suburb of that is Hometown, Pennsylvania. So I grew up in Hometown. <laughs> and there is, this is referred to as the High Bridge. And I was there a couple years ago visiting uh, my sister. And we walked out there. And, I mean, a little bit of a, not not sketchy bridge, but I mean, we walked out to the middle. And we hear the train whistle. Oh my gosh. <gasps> We're like, go, go, go. We had plenty of time, but I mean, we just didn't know and we weren't expecting to hear a train whistle so we're booking it back to their side we had plenty of time to get back to their side and then I was able to snap this photo and I just I love this picture gorgeous yeah we weren't expecting a train to come through <laughs> So this is a cool shot of the, that Kinzu Bridge, the one that I talked about that it, uh, tornado had taken out the middle. So here I am standing on the side where the, the tourist center is looking out to the middle and then, you know, it just stops, obviously where the bridge just now stops. But that's a cool view there. Picture. 
<laughs> I named I named this one Shirley. My favorite drink is a Shirley Temple. So <laughs> I had Sprite and grenadine, you know, cherry juice, and I put some cherries in it. And my glass just looks so pretty. <laughs> so I took this picture. <gasps> Again, like I just I love photography and capturing just cool photos. This is taken at Kenny Woods, this amusement park near us. Well, this one is cool. So this one was taken um, in Franklin here where I live. And this is actually the park where this craft show will be held. It's called Apple Fest and all the vendors are put in this park. And it's it's a beautiful park. You can see the courthouse, you know, in the background there. Uh, but in the winter, they, they decorate these trees. Um, so it's kind of cool when I'm at this craft show, we'll be like standing in, in this park here where this picture was taken. I love wave pictures. So this is at Lake Erie, and you can actually see like a rainstorm there in the background. And I, oh, I just love water pictures. Um, Ocean City, Maryland. Ocean City, Maryland, but out in the water. Mm. Piece of wood on the beach. Oh, little bee. Love it. Little goose family. Oh, this is that picture of that local mansion that's around here. So people local would recognize it. This local waterfall in our area. It's called Freedom Falls. Allegheny River. It's like two blocks from my house. This is a feature in Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, and we went up during a snowstorm because my husband wanted to see all the snow. He loves snow. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna die. Um, and you can't even see, like there's water behind this and you you couldn't see. Um, so I just, this picture came out really cool. I love that. Another angle of Freedom Falls. Allegheny River. Allegheny River. Nope, Freedom Falls. More rainstorm over Lake Erie. I had just gotten like a macro lens and was playing with it and I took like a little Pyrex clear dish and I took a I had scrapbook paper that was kind of see-through that had like music notes and stuff on it so I put that underneath the clear Pyrex dish and put a light up underneath it and then in the dish I put some water and some dish soap dish soap and mixed it around <sighs> These came out so cool. Like, I love these so much. <laughs> Here we go. More rainstorm pictures. Heights Field, where the Steelers play. Oh, they renamed it Akersher Field. Heights Field, where the Steelers play. It's just a sweet moment between, like, Worse than a dog. Pittsburgh Marathon. Watercolor. I did not have nearly as many watercolors as I thought I did. I need to get painting. Because I wanted to have a lot of original watercolors. Um, another one of the Galaxy Trees ones. Here is the banner. It's a, it's a small banner. Uh, Beauty for Ashes Art. Artist Jen Doyle that I put up at my booth. A couple more watercolors. Rainbow Unicorn. This one's cool. Galaxy Bear. Flag. Polar Bear. Oh, I like this one. This one is called Moody Silos. This one was like so simple, yet I had such a hard time with it. It's these snowy mountains. <laughs> uh, and we have Lighthouse. Okay. Whew. And then to round out my booth, again, not, not everybody's coming to these things to buy like a huge $200 painting. Um, every once in a while, Shutterfly has those sales for uh, magnets that are a dollar. I always jump on those. 
so here like I paid a dollar for this magnet and it's a picture of the park and the snow in Franklin here um, so I'll probably sell these for like five dollars which I think is reasonable for a magnet and some of them I actually put like my art prints on good one of that Kinzu bridge there um, so yeah so I get got some magnets oh, lots of magnets and then <laughs> two years ago again after seeing a YouTube video of like resin artwork I'm like oh I want to try that so I started making these resin coasters uh, so I have a lot in stock already like, oh, so these here these are my favorite came out like a peacock feather um, and I have this box of <laughs> resin coasters um, so since I have them already made I'll, I'll take them there and try to sell those as well I need to get cracking. I thought I had a lot more watercolors than that. <laughs> and I also wanted to create a banner that has everything that I'm willing to do, like a paint to order, especially these watercolors. Like any watercolor I've ever done in the past, even though it's sold, I'd be willing to do another one. So I want to have a banner. Uh, well, and even when I go, if I only have one of these like in stock and somebody buys it, if somebody comes by two hours later, how are they ever gonna know you know, if they were looking for a lighthouse, that I could do a lighthouse for them. So I'm looking to try to do a banner that has pictures of all of my made-to-order paintings. So I'm working on that. Vista Print actually has, like, a design team that if you tell them your idea and what you're looking for, like, they'll help you create and design this. So I'm going to do that and have a banner made up. There's also a couple uh, oil paintings that I've done a few times that I'd be comfortable doing, like, a paint-to-order thing. So I'll put those on there as well. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll probably do like a, a video, try to find some time and share what my my booth looks like when we get everything all together and you'll be able to see like how the pro panels and the, everything comes together. Oh, lots to do in a month. So thank you so much for joining me to see all this. I know I'm quite the mess in my office here, um, but I uh, hope to see you again next time. All right, bye.